part two of building a custom truck bed rack. I just came outside after work to work on this for a few hours. And I, I realized after closer inspection that one of the cross members that I put in was um, a little off straight. It was, it was just to the point where it was gonna bother me and it was gonna make things not line up very well. So I ended up cutting it off. And in the process of doing that, um, I kind of had this epiphany that no one, I mean, I don't think it's structurally necessary to have the cross numbers exactly at the same place. I mean, it doubles up in the back, it doubles up in the front here, but in the middle, there's not really a reason it has to do that. And um, so what I decided to do instead is I decided to offset them slightly. So the lower cross member that, that's closer to the truck bed um, is actually set forward further than the rear one. Um, and the rationale for that is I actually do want to be able to put some bikes in here vertically. And so I'm thinking that once this is on the truck bed, the lack of a mesh of the, whatever you call this stuff that I just picked up today, um, the lack of that in the back will allow me to stand up some bikes on the back or things that would be just a little bit too tall to fit underneath the rack. Um, and at the same time, I may not want to put on top of the rack because they just be absurdly high for going under um, brush and stuff when uh, camping off-road. So I don't know if that's really going to work well or not. We'll see. But um, for the time being, I have this mesh installed in the front and um, nothing in the back here. I might put a little bit of that screen in the middle. I'm not quite sure. This is this is pretty thin. I got thin stuff to save weight, but it's also not very strong. I just finished tacking it up. So this is really kind of fully installed. They just need to grind it off. Painting over rusty metal is always kind of rough, so I, I, first of all, I'm going to use this filler product on it to hopefully uh, fill in some of the little pittings that I've sanded over. It's not too bad. Um, I really don't want to spend any more time sanding it down, so I'm just going to go straight to the filler. Um, you can see I, I finished the first coat. I'm going to do one more coat and then um, just go with a normal spray primer and then just kind of like the 450 O'Reilly um, gloss black. This is going to get beat up probably pretty bad over time so I'm not super worried that it matches the truck exactly I'm not going to go full automotive paint on it but um so far I think it's looking pretty good I did put in more of these uh <clears throat> just plain old welding tabs off eBay I love having those around the other kind of bummer about the one inch um just one inch square tube is that just standard bungee clips don't fit great around that and so it's kind of nice to have these um, so you can just clip those on. It, there's all, you never seem to have one in the right place, but I've put uh, four on each side for a total of eight. One in the back, one kind of in the middle, one up front, and then one over the cab up there, and then the same thing on both sides. So hopefully that'll be enough. Okay, I think I figured it out. I got my little helper here. Wanna say hi? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> we went to the steel supply this morning and we got some one and a quarter inch outer diameter uh, I'm not sure what it is internally, but it fits perfectly over these feet. So we cut these to just the right size to fit inside the pockets. Um, we figured out how to make some brackets for the insides of these so that um, these will be, you know, again, semi-permanent, semi-permanently mounted in here. When the track rack, truck rack slides in, we're going to use some little spring clips internally here, you know, those little push button guys. Um, to slide in and so it'll just kind of click into place and we want to bring it back out you'll just push the button and lift it up a little bit and hopefully it'll release pretty easily overall I'm pretty happy with it um, looking at some of these welds in the light it was very difficult to get these tacked down if you're going to do a truck rack like this I would really recommend you go with something a lot um, thicker than this expanded stuff I was really just trying to keep the weight down um, but it's a little, it's not quite as heavy duty as I was hoping it would be. So I'm not going to put anything very heavy up here. And then the other problem with it is that it was very difficult to get these welds tacked down without melting. Um, I, I took some square tube to fit inside this larger one here. And uh, welding inside that is very, very difficult. It, oh, it looks like pretty horrible. I mean, it'll hold. Um, but it certainly is not easy to do that. And then I just, you know, put some nuts on the back here. So, hey, bud. You see that? Yep, so we welded that nut on the back, and then um, so this drops just right in that pocket, and then I, I need to space this out a little bit, so I'll just probably put some, you know, stack full of washers there, maybe some scrap material, and then it just bolts right into place. But other than that, they do seem to work pretty well, um, except I really didn't think how difficult it would be to weld that. All right, so let's get these installed. We have some paint drying over here. Oh my God, I picked up this super discount um, in a pinch spray paint Bright Touch at O'Reilly for like $4.50. This is by far the worst spray paint I've ever used. That is not an exaggeration. It's like, it feels like it's just solvent coming out. It's so diluted down. There's barely any black in it at all. I went through uh, four of these and it felt like I was going through one can of you know, 
for us to only at the new brand stuff. So definitely stay away from that. Um, the kind I like for general purpose fix-all um, gloss black is this Rust-Oleum stuff. They sell it at Walmart for like pretty much the same price. I think it's about five dollars. Um, but it really it, it does go on thick. It is kind of I mean it'll still run, but it's it goes on really kind of tacky, and so it, it's difficult to run unless you have really poor technique. Um, so just pick up some of this Rust-Oleum high gloss stuff. It's, this is the 2X one. That's I think it might be thicker than the regular much. I've just started bolting the rack onto the truck and. Um, I'm not even sure it really needs um, linchpins on the sides of these because what I figured out is if you um, intentionally misalign the brackets I made inside, I painted just painted them black and then bolted them directly onto the truck bed like this. But if you kind of put them at a slight angle like that, um, when you're dropping in the rack, they'll just friction fit in there. So they'll, you just kind of you know squeeze it a little bit. Um, so it slides down and that natural tension when you release it, it's going to push against the side um, and get it to stay in there pretty pretty firm. And when you want to pull it out, you just stand on the truck bed and kind of strong arm it, just push it in a little bit and pop it out. So I'm not really even sure um, I need to I need to put pins in the side of this. Now, I mean, it's not a big deal to do that, but it's just kind of really nice if it just friction fits in safely. Um, without having to do any additional modifications. Overall, I'm very happy with it. It came out very well. I've been driving with this for a few days now, and overall, I'm very happy with it. There are a couple minor things that I would change if I had to do it again, or if they really bother me, I might go back and do. Um, one is that these welding tabs on the front really are great. They do a good job of holding things down, but the, the downside of having these on the bottom facing down is it makes it extremely easy to scratch the top of your, tr your truck cab when getting the whole thing on and off. I especially if you accidentally kind of miss the pockets on the rails and you drop down in your truck and then you're just going to put a huge gouge in your paint. Eh, whatever, it's a truck, but still, it's kind of nice to not have those everywhere. Um, the second thing is that if you do end up with a rattle, I figured out how to get rid of that reliably. And um, the reason it's doing that is if you, if you tack each of these little thin wires down, you know, kind of in the middle on the cross members, what it'll hold it in place but when it actually starts vibrating you'll get um, that rattle is coming from the little tiny gap at the side of the cross member um, because you know there'll be maybe a centimeter or even half centimeter seems to generate a little bit of rattle so the solution there is rather than tacking it from the bottom we'll you know tack it in place just so it doesn't fall off but then going from the top and then if you weld it from the top down um, into the little crack, it completely prevents any sort of rattling. Getting it on and off by yourself is pretty difficult. It's just kind of at that right weight and height where it's, um, unless you're pretty tall and a pretty big guy, um, it's probably gonna be a little difficult to do. Um, if your truck's lifted, forget about it. Um, I'm gonna go back and put some sort of handles on here, um, kind of like you'd have on a roll cage or something, um, just so that it's a little easier to lift. If you're just putting your hands on it like this and getting it on and off, um, it's fine, but yeah, if you're if you're trying to do it in kind of a weird situation, when you jump down from the trunk bed, it's really easy for this to slip, especially if you have gloss on there. So I'm going to put some sort of handle here that's not sharp and just very easy and beefy to grab onto for getting it on and off. And that'll also give another kind of anchor point for bungee cords and tie downs on the top that it won't where the um, if you're using a tie down, it won't slide back and forth. I, at first I thought I would just kind of put it up here, but I really need something horizontal um, where it's not gonna you know, slip and slide and it can just be kind of a small um, small area, maybe like a set, um, maybe like 10 centimeters or so, just big enough to kind of grab onto with your hand and also to put the tie down strap onto. I hope this was inspirational. If you have other good ideas for things I could do to mine, please let me know. Um, I'm gonna be giving it a lot of use this year. So um, yeah, let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe.